Well, welcome to the Cinnabar. Now, after a little taste of spring over the last couple weeks, winter has returned with a vengeance here to the ranch. So, instead of going out and shooting today, we're going to head back down to the shop and do an episode, kind of a follow-up on an episode we did about a month ago, where we used a hardness tester to try to identify the different types of steels that Winchester used in their barrel making. So today we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to look at the steels that were used to make uh, the receivers and maybe a few of the other parts as well. So for you Winchester fans, this ought to be an interesting episode. Okay, so here's our setup. We've got this Rockwell hardness tester that we're going to use to try to identify the different types of steels used in the receivers on these Winchesters throughout time. Now don't get caught up in the minutia of the importance of the relative hardnesses. We're just using it as, as a tool to identify the different types of steels. And, and so, like a mild steel is going to be in a certain range, and a hardened steel is going to be in another different type of a range. And they, they may vary a little bit, but that's not really a big concern. It's just a tool to identify. Now, as far as I understand it, and I've got some preconceived notions about what we're going to find, but that's why we do this. When we did the barrel testing, there were some surprises. It surprised me. It surprised some of the experts that I had talked to ahead of time about what we could expect. So our expectation is, of course, the, the progression of the steels used in receivers for Winchesters is, of course, the early brass frames or, or actually what is a, a tin bronze alloy or gunmetal. Uh, was used in, the, of course, the Henrys and the 1866s. And, of course, when we went to the 1873s, the very earliest 73s, up to about serial number 42,000, were a forged iron. So we've got a first model um, 1873 here. We're going to test it. And then after serial number 42,000 in the 73s, we went to just a mild steel and what we what is similar to a 1018 mild steel that that uh, is used commonly today and we saw a lot of the barrels that we tested were were that mild steel and and what we our expectation is is that Winchester used that from from about 1875 when they went to that mild steel receiver in the 73s all the way up into the 1930s when the uh, eight, model 71 came out in I think 35 and the model 70 bolt action rifles came out in, in 36 um, and our expectation is that those were a proof steel or what is really similar to 4140 which is a common barrel making steel today but we think everything else in between was just a mild steel. So we're going to test out that theory today. And of course, some of them, like, like the early 86s, were color case hardened. And that's a whole different story, and we'll get into that as we go th through things today as well. So here's, here's how the thing works. If you didn't watch the, the barrel hardness test episode, we've got a, a test block of mild steel here, and we've used this one quite a little bit. And so what we do is we raise this ram, and we preload. There's a... a Braille or a penetrator. This, in this case, we're working in the B scale for mild steel, and this one is a hardened steel penetrator. And we preload that penetrator until we line these these two little arrows up, and then we release weight back here. And then that that pushes that penetrator down, and it's the difference between the preload and then the weighted penetration that gives us our uh, hardness. So here we, we're going to release the weight. We'll, we'll see this come around and we'll do lots of close-ups of this where you can see it much closer as we go along. Okay, so now the weight, that braille has penetrated as far as it's going to and then we'll take that weight back off and the difference gives us a value of 76. Now, mild steel, we expect to be right in that area. And we could test this two or three different times and get something a little bit different, but um, basically in the mid-70s is where we expect to find mild steel. And so if we find something in, in that range, we're going to expect that these parts or receivers are a mild steel that has not been heat treated or case hardened. Okay, on the models that we can, we've taken the lower tangs out because it's a lot easier to test just a lower tang than 
trying to hold the receiver up there and test an area of the receiver that isn't going to show because this does leave a little dimple in the surface and of course we don't really want to do that with with the exterior part of a, a receiver that shows okay so we're going to get this test block out of here this tang this lower tang is out of a first model 1873 this one's 19,000 and change so around 1874 1875 and we're, we're taking kind of a leap of faith that the lower tang's made out of the same material that the rest of the receiver is. Uh, and I guess guess we'll see here. Now this this would be forged iron, these these early ones, or we expect that to them to be. And my expectation is that forged iron wouldn't be as hard as forged steel, but that's why we're doing the test to find out if our expectations are going to be met or not. Okay, so we get everything lined up here and release the weight. All right, so this is actually much softer than than even the mild steel. Now, remember, we we would expect mild steel to be over in this seventy to eighty. Uh, hardness, B range hardness, and we're only at about 55 here. So it does look like our, our forged iron in the first models is quite a little bit softer than the forged steel that was used later on. Okay, so now we've got a lower tang out of a third model. This one's about 200,000, so late 1880s. And we'll see how it compares with this first model, remember it was about 55, we'll get this one preloaded, release the weight, and let's see where our hardness ends up. Okay, so now we see we've got right in here in the mid 70s. So that's just exactly where we would expect to find mild steel. In fact, it's only just uh, one off from that 76 that we got. It's about 74 and a half, about one and a half from that test block of mild steel that we used. So we can see now that at least in this range, in these the third model uh, receiver or lower tang, we're mild steel. Okay, now we're gonna make a big jump forward Time-wise, we've got a 92 receiver here. I don't have the lower tang for it, so we're going to we're going to test the side of the upper tang here. This one's 402,000, so that puts it 1906, 1907, somewhere in there. Take that out of there and get this set up here. A little trickier with with these out here. Okay, there we go. All right, drop the weight. And of course we expect this to be another mild steel. And let's see. Okay, so we're at 69 on the B scale. It's a little lower than we would expect, but certainly it's, it's a, a mild steel receiver. Okay, next we've got this just trashed 1890 receiver from 1912. This one's pitted, the, the threads are gone out of it, barrel threads. Um, we're not going to hurt it any by putting one more divot in it. So we wouldn't expect, of course, these 22s to have hardened steel, either barrels or receivers, but let's just see. Everything lined up here. Drop the weight. And here we go. Okay, 85. Of course, that's a little higher than what we would expect there. Um, and again, there is some variation in these steels. But again, in the mild steel range. What we found with the barrels was we got into 
uh, nickel steel, which we don't expect they ever use nickel steel or Winchester ever use nickel steel in the receivers. But then when we got into the hardenable steels of the uh, proof steel or the 4140, then we were, were clear up over 100. So this is, even though it's a little higher than expected, it's still in that, that uh, mild steel range. Now this one's going to be a little tougher. This is a, a 95 receiver and of course we don't have a removable lower tang in them so we're going to see if we can't get this in here and tested. Let's see where we get this. That looks like it'll work. This one's in the 400,000 range which puts it about uh, 1917. And again we would expect this to be mild steel. This one had was a 3040 Craig, so it would have had a nickel steel barrel, but we expect it to have a mild steel receiver. Okay, let's see how it goes. And we're at about 71. Again, in that 70 to 80 range is where we expect to find mild steel. Now here we've got a question I'm hoping we'll be able to solve. Now I've had a couple of experts that both of them I trust very much have different opinions about the Model 71. One says the 71 was the first of the Winchesters to use proof steel in the receivers, which is a hardenable 4140 type steel. Another told me they don't believe so. So we're going to find out here today if, if it's in the 70 to 80 range in that mild steel range then of course it's a mild steel receiver. If it's up and what we found with those proof steel barrels we tested earlier was about 100 to 102 was where they are on the, on the B scale hardness. So let's check this one out and see where we're at. Alright so we're getting a preloaded here. And now we'll release the weight. And let's see where we're at. Ha! Huh. 72. So we're in that that mild steel range, at least on the, the lower tang on this. And this is a short tang version from 1952, so I couldn't get it set up over here to, to get that upper tang, but uh, certainly at least the lower tang in this 71 from 1952 is mild steel. Okay, we've got a couple more items that I want to change out to C-scale for that are going to be quite a little bit harder. So before we leave there, this isn't about receiver steels, but we've got a, a bolt out of an 1895. This one's a little after the turn of the century and a locking block. Now these both take recoil, um, and then, so they're going to take a fair amount of abuse. So we would expect that they are, are at least somewhat harder than just mild steel. So let's check it out and see what we find. Okay. First this bolt, Oops. okay, and here we go, clearly on the B scale we're at about 98, so that certainly um, more than just mild steel and that's up in the range where we saw our, our nickel steel and our proof steel when we tested barrels. So before we get completely changed over here for C scale we'll try these locking blocks too and I certainly would expect them to be at least somewhat hardened. I'll hold on to it there, stabilize it. where we end up. Uh, we're still stabilizing just a little bit and that's about 83 so that's kind of in, in between her. That's a little surprising to me. Okay so let's talk a little bit about case hardened parts or case hardened receivers and we've, we've got a, a nicely case hardened hammer here that we're going to test but we need to go to C scale because case hardened parts 
can be quite a little bit harder than our 4140s or our, our hardened steels that we see in the barrel steels or even in some of the later receiver steels and they can damage our B scale hardened penetrator so we've got to go to a, a diamond penetrator and we've got to add some weight in this case 50 kilograms so we've got a that's actually not a 50 kilogram weight but because of the mechanical advantage of where the fulcrum is in here it equates to adding another 50 kilograms okay so let's see what happens here now we're gonna we're gonna test this down below where it would show when it's in the rifle now remember our, our hardened parts, our 4140 type or proof steel parts were about 100 to 102 and while this will be in a C steel we can we can uh, extrapolate where it would be in the C scale. So we're going to go through the same process here. And see where we end up on the C scale. And then we can convert. Okay, so on the C scale we're at 27, which puts us at 103. So that, that's just about where our, our proof steel was when we were doing our proof steel barrels. Now, there are certain parts that needed to be case hardened, and hammers, of course, are one of them. Because if we didn't case harden these things, the, the hammer notches would wear out quickly. I mean, within a few times cocking and shooting, those hammer notches would be gone. So there are a few parts that needed to be case hardened. And remember that case hardening only goes a few thousandths deep. The rest of this underneath that few thousandths is still mild soft steel. Now, on receivers, you know, like our 86s, our early 86s were all color case hardened. Of course, we could order, or our forefathers could order uh, case hardened receivers and, and several of the other models. But it wasn't necessary. That, that, it was really more for the aesthetics. And, and the color case hardening process um, the best colors come at kind of a lower temperature than what's optimum for hardening. So the, the goal wasn't to harden on receivers, it was actually uh, an aesthetics to make, make them purdy, of course. Okay, so we've got that out of the way. Now what I want to do is while we're in the C scale, I've got a Model 70 receiver here from much later. This one's just about the break between 1964, and so we'll, we'll test it out and see where it is. Now, I have not tested one of these before, but I'm told that they were hardened, and I suspect they were. So let's give this one a try. Okay, so we've got one good flat spot here that we can see if we can get a good test on it. And we're right around the locking lugs here, so we would think that would be a place that would, by necessity, need to be hardened. And let's see where we are. Of course, again, we're looking at the C scale. And about 45 on the C scale, which that would convert to about 114 on that B scale. So harder than what we've seen with some of the earlier hardened materials, uh, both nickel steel and proof steel when we were looking at the, uh, the barrels. Now just for the fun of it, let's see how a gunmetal or tin bronze receiver stacks up against those, uh, those steel receivers we've been testing. Now this is a, a potentially kind of a, a historic firearm here. It don't, doesn't look like much, but this 66 was dug out of a watering trough where it was being used as rebar in a cement concrete watering trough. And you can see in the end here, it's still f f full of concrete. Um, most of it's been chipped out of the rest of it, but it was found in northern Montana at just about the spot that General Miles caught up with Chief Joseph and the Nez Perce as they were making their way to Canada. So there's a fair to middle in chance that, that this was a Nez Perce gun that was captured uh, 
by the by the soldiers, so, and was probably in pretty rough shape, so it ended up being rebar. Okay, so let's get this in here. Right, we got it good and stable now. Now, of course, this one's been in a water trough for better than a century and don't know if that's going to affect hardness. Uh, we would certainly expect that gunmetal would be quite a little bit softer even than mild steel. And here we go. Alright. And uh, it's just about the same hardness as the uh, first model, right about 50 on the B scale, so very similar to that forged iron that was used in the 71s to start with. Now, it, it may have similar hardness and it's probably been hardened from, from time, you know, brass and bronze tends to harden over time, um, but we probably would expect it not to be quite as tough or resilient against deformation. You know, its elastic strength probably isn't near as, as good. But similar as, as far as hardness. Now you might find it kind of surprising that Winchester used such soft materials in the receivers throughout the lever gun era. But remember, it's really the barrel that takes the brunt of the pressure when we fire these old rifles. Now, decades ago, P.O. Ackley did some experiments with a Model 1894 in 3030, of course, Ackley improved, where he introduced progressively more headspace, five thousandths at a time, and fired the, fired the gun and checked the, the brass. And what he found was that unless the, the uh, chamber had been oiled or something, that brass would expand, grab onto that chamber, and wouldn't back up into the bolt face. What would happen is the primer would be pushed out. So if he, if he introduced five thousandths headspace, then that primer would back up five thousandths. Another five thousandths, we're, we got a primer backing out ten thousandths, and on and on and on, until about forty-six thousandths when that, the primer actually failed. But the cartridge never backed up, even though it had all that room and could get ahead of steam and, and beat into that bolt face, it just didn't do it. Now, that's not to say that something more powerful than 3030 might, might do that. And, and of course, we can beat it up or say if we got a, a severe overcharge or, or we've chambered something that, like the uh, people that have chambered 86s into that 450 Alaskan. I've even seen broken lugs in an 86 from that. So we know that that uh, bolt thrust can happen, but typically it didn't with with just factory loads in these old lever guns. So the receivers didn't have to be beefed up superbly. And of course, what we've seen here today is that the both the the bolt and the locking lugs are harder than the receiver material themselves. And and if there is going to be something that takes the the bolt thrust, that's going to be it. Well, thanks for joining us today. I hope you enjoyed today's episode, maybe learned a little something. I, I know there's some things I learned here today that um, are now more, more clear to me. So, until next time, happy trails from Cinnabar.